Hey guys, welcome back to Project Arrhythmia. It has been some time since I've made any videos, but you know what? I've decided we're going to do something completely different. This idea of... This is an idea I've had for a while. We're going to do a behind-the-scenes video on one of my levels. And I'm going to make more behind-the-scenes videos on the rest of my levels if people like this one. So I'm basically just going to go through the level in the editor and show how things work, and I've never seen any other video do that yet, so I think that will be pretty cool. So of course, we're gonna start with none other than Immune, which is probably still my favorite level to this point, so yeah, biased. And we're doing this in the alpha editor because the alpha editor has a very cool feature that lets you zoom out the entire level in the editor, which makes it very nice for behind the scenes. I can just zoom out and you can see everything that's going on. So I'm just gonna play the level. Um, I'll stop along the way to point things out and we'll see what happens. I have not written a script at all for this. I'm just gonna save stuff as I go and edit it later. That always seems to work for me. So let's get started. This is the beginning of the level, obviously. Here you can see how the, the background works. The objects just kind of loop around like that. They just kind of teleport as they, you know, go up and down. You can see the lasers and the bullets spawning in, which is kind of funny. And you can see them disappear. And there's the warning, so that you can see what the screen size is, basically. It's um, that part right there. Now, we're about to transition into the blue section. And this is a very sudden transition, so let's slow it down and see what happens. Right, so let's walk through that. So the back, the, the entire theme suddenly changes, all of these bars spawn in at the same time, which is probably not very efficient, but I did not know anything about optimization when I made this level, because this was a year and a half ago. This was a year and a half ago. So you're going to see some not optimized things, I'm sorry, in advance. Anyways, the blue bars spawn in, they pretty quickly move up, and those things in the background objects spawn and that's that's that transition the bloom looks weird because it's alpha and alpha bloom is bad right now so we'll just have to deal with that so let's see if i can move to a different layer to get rid of some light all right that's better um you can see the text spawning in at the top and bottom that's kind of funny the left and right you'll see the those word things spawn in that's kind of funny. These water droplets are dropping in. I had to manually position all those, by the way, because these bars at the bottom keep moving and the bars at the top are moving, so I had to make sure they all line up and I had to position all of them. All right, so now comes the part we've all been waiting for. This is the part where it spins and not that everyone's favorite part, obviously. Now first let's see what happens, and then I'm gonna explain how I actually do it, which it's surprisingly simple, like most things in this level, it's very simple. Alright, so first thing you'll notice is I did some parallax there just to make it look better. And actually, okay, here you'll notice that all of the bars on the right just kind of spawn in. Because I did not think about teleporting them around, so there's literally just a bunch of bars. I don't reuse any of them, they're just all there for when we start scrolling, so yeah. And of course these guys on the side just spawn in, and now we're gonna start spinning. And this is what it looks like. When we're in the... It, the bars at the top and bottom are just there, with the keyframes and everything. And we're just kind of moving along. It's kind of funny, honestly. Alright, so that's how it looks like. Now, how does it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, 
These background objects on this section of the level are different from the ones that are spinning because these are static and I just tried to recreate what the spinning objects looked like at a certain point in time because it would be impossible the way I did it to make it start moving suddenly. So what you see here is a completely... right here it switches to a completely different set of objects right there. And that's what we do for the duration level. So like we have this pillar here that's spinning. It's just in out sign movement and then out sign in sign scale and a bunch of those in quick succession. These are all these objects down here because I also did not reuse them. So it just kind of does that and that creates the illusion. That part's pretty simple. The part here is also kind of simple. We have these square. What? Oh, that's a prefab, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't like it when you click on prefabs. Okay, so basically these squares are just um, big rectangles. Again, in outside movement from here to there, in outside scale, same thing. What makes them look like they're rotating is this object here that's a circle, the color of the background, which I can illuminate. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like. There's one here too. Actually, that's a rectangle. There's one here. There it is. Oh yeah, that's just a giant stretched out circle. There's one down here too. Let me make it all. And then there's one down here too. So that's what the background objects are doing. And now it might be easier for you to see that these things are just rectangles. And they're being covered by these circles in the background, which vaguely makes them look like they're rotating. It doesn't, it doesn't look that good, honestly. But it, it works. It gets the job done. I'm going to change all these back because this is bothering me to look at. Actually, fun fact about this, if you play this level in like the alpha branch where you can toggle um, high visibility or high contrast or something in the settings, it turns all the objects black and white or something, you'll actually be able to see like the first set of rotating objects before they appear because they're actually just background colored. Like this set of objects that starts rotating here exists like over here, it starts rotating. You just can't see it because it's background colored. I could have just like scale zeroed it or something, but I don't think I knew about that I could scale zero it. I don't know why I didn't think of that, but it's just background colored and it shows up right here. So you'll be able to see that if you play on high contrast mode. You may be wondering about this text effect where it, it circles around the pillar, which seems to make a lot of people go nuts for some reason. And this is their favorite effect on the level, which is funny to me because it's the same thing that I'm doing in the rest of the section. Actually, let me just let's zoom in for this part. Okay, so here's all the letters. Obviously, they're all individually animated. Alright, okay, so it looks like they're all parented here, and this is where the keyframe is, and they all just have an offset. Okay, so that's fine. Um, basically, it's very easy. The scale starts off at 0x and a small y, like half the y. Or like, not even half. <laughs> just slightly less than what it is. Because then it goes to 3, 3, outside, and then it goes inside to 0 and then back to 2.5. That is literally it, and then it's just in outside movement. That is the entire effect. That's all it does. Every letter does that, and that it just works. It, it's convincing, honestly, for how simple it is. So honestly, the moral of the story is that sometimes simple is better. Anyways, that's that. Let's go to the next section. Also, this transition is one of my favorite things right here. Let's play it in slow motion. Nice. Look at that, all these squares disappear, then that thing turns into the green thing, and then it, all the other objects kind of spawn in. And then that disappears, and that does that, and that, it works, that's great. Now here's the next section, which is just very simple, nothing special is happening here. I'll just let this play out. It is just kind of interesting seeing it zoomed out like this.
Now, we get to the other cool part, with the zooming effect. Actually, fun fact about this, this is a normal object, because obviously I want to, you have to move away from the center, but then these are all decoration objects, because the screen zooms in here and it pushes you to, it pushes you to the center, so it makes that work properly. Why is that red? Why is that red? That's weird. Okay, anyways. This is interesting to look at now. So these are all squares. And you can see that now that we're zoomed out. You can see them disappearing as they get big enough. Yeah, that's interesting. Alright, so. This is also a very simple effect to pull off. So all of these squares are prefabs. <laughs> Now, let me see if I can open one of- oh my god, what is all this? God, why are there so many prefabs? Why did I make these prefabs? I don't know, just so I can edit them, I guess. Okay, let's expand this one. Okay, that, it's just one object, I don't know why. I think I made it a prefab in case I wanted to change something and it, it could apply to all of them, but... Okay, so each one of these squares is an outline, as you can see. It just scales up exponentially. That's, that's literally it. This is literally just in Expo, like all these squares. Same thing for the projectiles too, except they also have a random position in addition to the scale. It's a very simple effect to pull off, and it's technically not even perfect because in Expo is technically not fast enough to produce actual 3D, but it's simple enough in this level that you don't even notice the difference. And also, of course, you might get some layering issues because all of these projectiles are on, like, the same layer because they're prefabs. So you might get some weird stuff like this where it overlaps, even though it's technically behind it, but it's not really behind it, it's just an illusion, so... You know, I did try to, like, mitigate that by having, like, a few layers where it, like, steps up. like. Like, back here, you can see it's behind it, but then it eventually goes in front of it, because I tried to, like, make separate layers. I, like, duplicated it at certain points. It's not perfect, but it helps. Anyways, that's how that works. Then we have these things also come up. Look at that. And here I just have an, a, an entirely different set of squares going at double speed for this part here. And now we can see Nano because we're on Alpha Print and themes have gray tails now. But anyway, if we just get teleported to the side, the square appears. You can already see the background objects before they're revealed here. Look at that, then, then that happens. It's like, I guess I made like a background color here at this specific part. Anyways, pulses. Lots of pulses. Look at that. Look at all those objects getting stuck. Look at this. Look at this wonderful helper here. That's so great. And then JSAB. Why, well, look at those objects just kind of stay there. That's funny. Anyways, JSAB. In fact, all of these objects spawn at almost the same time, which is terrible. But it doesn't lag unless you're on alpha, because the game just it's just optimized enough to handle that. So I never noticed it, but yeah, that happens. Look at that, and they're all they're all duplicates. I didn't reuse them either. Actually, before we go on, let me go back to here. Here's a fun fact for you. Back when I was making this, I was thinking if Alpha got finished before I finished the level, which um, obviously it didn't, I was gonna add a hue effect here where it would start changing the hue rapidly, and it would stop on pink, which would transition it to the JSAP part, but instead it, it just kinda happens. I was gonna like have it hue shift until it got to pink with the hue keyframe. In case it wasn't obvious, 
put the J-Stab part here because this part of the song shares the same melody as Into the Zone also by Shirobon. I realize not everyone gets this reference, but now you do. And actually I was also gonna like, I was thinking about adding more of the lyrics here, but I just didn't because I didn't want to add the lyrics to the J-Stab section, I just thought it wouldn't make sense, but I did, I think I started it. Let me see if I can find it. Never mind, I guess I deleted it. Anyways, I was just gonna have the the first two lyrics appear on the square. Like right like right here. I'm pretty sure I animated that. But I I guess I deleted it. Um I don't know about the rest, I never got that far. And let's continue on. And look at that. Look at those graphics. Actually funny thing. I don't know what, was, what I was doing, but like, I'm pretty sure if I click here, I can find... So this is like the lines. The lines that appear here, the lines that move. I had to start spawning them early because they have to be there by the time these um, rectangles are gone. And for whatever reason, I just was unaware that setting the scale to zero was an option, like with a giant parent. So for all those lines, I just instantly changed their color from black to pink, and these particular ones are decorations. And then the rest of them are normal. So like, if you just dash in here for like a few seconds, you won't get hit, but then eventually you'll get hit. But I don't know why this was the only thing I could think of, but yeah. Anyways, here's this. Look at those guys just kind of do that. Nice. That's immune. Uh, I mean, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. That went faster than I expected, honestly. I sure hope I didn't forget anything from the times that I've already imagined making this video in my head. But um, yeah, stay tuned for more behind-the-scenes videos. Let me know what level you want to see next.